I guess I really didn't know my dad until later in life, and by then it was a bit too late. His illness had robbed a lot of his mind, and I was treated to glimpses of his life and his thoughts. I can remember watching him at his desk, looking out the window, staring outside at nothing. The thousand yard stare that people have when they remember bad memories or when combat veterans get lost in their thoughts of bad times. But I didn't really know him. We had always been antagonistic to each other, especially during my teenage years. Nothing I did was good enough, yet I was told by my mom that he was proud of me. It was a way of tough love, I guess. Nobody in the world is going to say good job and it's up to you to know when you did a good job. I was taught that you should take pride in yourself and your work. Work was really important to him. But you know, for someone who strived for his father's affection, I never got to know him until later in his life and then after he was gone. I became obsessed with saving things from my father's past clearing out his family's house in Germany, I made sure I saved everything I could send back home to America or back or take back with us. So let's start at the beginning in the year 1914, the beginning of World War I. My father was born in July of, to Carl Frederick Adam Bauer and Anna Susanna Bauer. He was born in the little town called Ladenburg, a town with a population of about 4,000 to 5,000 people. It is a town in northwestern Baden-Württemberg, Germany. The town lies on the right bank of the Neckar River, 10 kilometers northwest of Heidelberg and 10 kilometers east of Mannheim. They were the major two cities nearby. Four years later, his sister Mari would be born. And then in 1923, Willy Bauer, his youngest brother, would round up the family. In 1932, my dad had to join the army. Uh, it was mandatory and you were required to do your two years of service and then uh, five years in the reserve. Unfortunately for Willie, who was born in 1923, his service began in 1941. It was at the height, I'm telling you, right there was at the height of Hitler's all-out war on the Eastern Front I will tell you about a letter that my dad wrote that I found which would explain everything about their feelings about the war and how it affected him. My dear brother, quite some time has passed since I wrote to you. How are you today and where are you? I am wondering. So far I have always found out from mother at home how you are and where you are but lately you have not written much and often, so we worry about you and wait for the mail each and every day. Mother is so worried about you when she does not hear from you. In this case, you must write only a few words so mother is not always so worried. I know you most likely don't have the opportunity to write and the time. From all this at home, they do not know what is going on in the military now. Willie, if you can, just write a postcard. That is always something to quiet mother down, if possible. You do not have to write to me, but like I say, write to the family, to mother. My thoughts are with you often, and I wonder where you are. Most likely you are in the east. I hope I am wrong, but you could be near Russia. I know how you feel and what your thoughts are and how you think. It's very difficult. I know that my dear brother, and that is why I do not want to write just a few words because they are only words for people that do not know what war really is and never saw war. I know how that really is. I was long enough with all that crap. I know what you must go through out there and what you, all of you are out there thinking. If one thinks with a sane mind, then one only shakes one's head over the great drama that comes over the world and millions of people in poverty and hunger and despair went into. That's the 20th century, it seems. But the people who brought us these thoughts will get their punishment. Now I don't want to write about this anymore. You know me better than I can only say in a few sentences. 
if you get this letter in the East, it will be almost Christmas and your thoughts will be at home and it will be hard for you to hear peace on earth like it says in the song. I think of myself as I always was there a year ago and I was chased by the Russians from one place to another. On Christmas there was nothing to hear or see. Parcels were difficult to get through. Six weeks later I was in Germany again. I wish this would happen to you, who knows. That's why always be careful and look out for yourself and I know we will see each other again. I hope very soon. It cannot be God's wish that we don't see each other again at home. We have lived so far as decent Christian people. We have a mother that had to go through so much at home in her childhood. She never doubted her religion. Always think that you will come home again. I am always thinking like that about myself, dear brother. I am busy lately, but have today a day off from the bombing in Berlin. A lot has been destroyed. A lot has happened. Where I lived was destroyed too. Right now I am with cleanup detail and after that I most likely will go to Permessens in the Palatine region of Germany. That would not be a bad idea. How it will be there I will find out when I am there. It is possible I will have to be a soldier again, but I don't think so. I am feeling everything might be over faster than we think and come to an end. Now, my dear brother, I will slowly come to an end. I hope these few lines arrive by you in good health. That is my wish for you. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a healthy Happy New Year for the coming year. The coming year will bring us most likely peace and then we will the two of us will see each other again very soon. Again, I wish you the best with all my heart, your brother Carl. Do not write to me here anymore. Wait for my new address. My father told us the story that when the officers visited his house to tell the family about Willie's death and how Germany was thankful for Willie's service, his mother got mad at the officers and threw them out and cursed at them and the war. She was distraught, and the family took it hard. As the war ended in 1945, my dad's father took ill and passed away on October of 1945. Since everything was destroyed, there was a medicine shortage that contributed to his father's death. I believe it was his heart. One more thing to be angry and resentful for. At the age of 37, my dad left Germany for Canada. He landed at Fort Francis in Ontario, Canada, where he would work as a linesman for a power company. He worked in Winnipeg, Canada, and there he had an accident where he fell off a pole. He was hospitalized with a broken leg and was out of commission for over a year. In a few short years, my dad eventually immigrated to the U.S., where he worked for a company that fixed motors. He supplemented his income by fixing televisions and radios. That's how he met my mom through a mutual friends of theirs. My mom's brother married my aunt in September of 1957 where both my mom and dad were best men and maid of honor. By October my mom and dad married. My aunt and uncle had three children in the space of five years and my mom went through four miscarriages before I showed up. I believe it was a stressful time for both my parents. My mom told me that she cried to the doctor complaining that maybe she had waited too long and that she was too old. But the doctor assured her she was fine and assured her she would conceive. She did, but like everything, it wasn't that simple. I was a sick baby when I showed up and mom told me she would stay awake for most of the night to make sure I was okay as she listened to my labored breathing in the crib. Of course, this led to my Oma's coming in. Oma is German for grandmother. So they came to my rescue. My dad's mom and my mom's stepmom were both nurses, so I was soon in good hands. One Oma stayed almost a whole year while the other came after her. Make no mistake, I was a prince. I was spoiled rotten. Having been born into the 20th century, antibiotics came to my rescue, and I was soon better. 
I guess you can call me an obedient child. I was closer to my mom than my dad. Dad was a mythic figure who said little and one who never joked. He was away at work for most of the day and so I gravitated to mom. Throughout the years I tried getting my dad's affection but nothing I did was good enough and it is how my father and I became distant. Our antagonistic attitudes towards each other grew as I reached my teen years where I was put down for my love of photography, movie making, and writing. My mother fostered my creative side. During these years my dad had some health issues and he fainted two times while on the job. Once at a work site and once in the subway. Eventually the doctors discovered it was my dad's heart and he needed a pacemaker. This was the first of my dad's ailments. Carrying a 25 to 30 pound toolbox for a majority of his career had taken its toll. My dad had always wanted to go back to Germany and his sister Mari always asked when he would. But he wanted to retire and get his 20 years in. He belonged to the IBEW Local 3 and he was proud to be a member. He loved what he did and would tinker at home even while my mom yelled at him to put a newspaper down on the table because he, she was tired of him burning holes in the tablecloth. My dad and I would work on science fair projects and it's where I learned how to solder and learn basic electronics. But ever the dreamer, my head was filled with celluloid dreams of animating creatures via stop motion animation and creating space battles in the backyard. I became interested in special effects and cinematography through watching movies on the TV and experimenting with my Super 8 camera. In 74, my dad retired, and in 79, we all went to Germany for that summer. It was there that my dad and mom investigated the American school in Heidelberg. I believe to this day that it was my mom who convinced my dad that it was wrong to pull me away from my home. I was homesick and missed my friends while I was there. I listened to Armed Forces Network at night and loved the Wolfman who would be on the radio till 12 a.m. I was not impressed with Germany. I was the quintessential American who loved rock and roll, movies, and yes, girls. My mom was my ally. It was she who helped me pursue my interests. I would eventually apply to Brooklyn College since they had a small production department. But from junior high to high school, my dad had other health issues and it worried him as well as all of us. Germany became not as important and throughout those years my dad researched what he might have. Many doctors suggested radical surgery to alleviate his symptoms but he was never satisfied with their suggestions and it would upset my dad. But after researching the problem and interviewing more new doctors my dad found a good doctor and he realized it was my dad's kidney which was the problem. He eventually got one of his kidneys removed and his symptoms went away. It took time for my dad to recuperate and the surgery frightened him and it took its toll. I eventually got into Brooklyn College and studied film production and minored in TV and radio. I was awarded some grants which I pursued through my high school college advisor. My mom told me my father was impressed by my tenacity, yet he never told me and it was that which I really craved. In those years we would talk about things during dinner and watch the news together and it was through our conversations that I learned more about my dad. It was like a veil had been lifted and I got to see the man behind the curtain. His war experiences, the death of his brother, and his mistrust of the government and his politics. I realized that my dad and I were similar and yet two sides of the coin. It wasn't until 1986 when the next bomb would drop and it was a big one. Mari, my dad's sister, was found dead in the vestibule of our house in Germany. This was over Liberty Weekend in New York, July of 1986. They eventually got a flight out and I stayed behind finishing up the last classes for school. My dad was devastated and again he took it hard. He had some friends help him through it and my mom was beside him. I eventually graduated and found work in a photo lab and for a while my dad softened on going to Germany. He had already started softening there in 1986, in the that Union year, the when Chernobyl happened. The, the radiation had seeped into One Europe the and it scared him. And now the death of his sister took the wind out of his sails. By 1988, I bought a car that my dad didn't want me to buy and swore he would not get in it. 
but I was soon ferrying my parents to their relatives and their attitude towards me, us having a car changed. My parents went to Germany once again to investigate the house and visit distant relatives, but it was on this trip that my dad's thoughts of living in Germany changed. When they returned from the trip, my, both my parents looked awful. My dad was hospitalized for a few days in Germany and their experience with the German healthcare system was far from good. By this time, most of my dad's friends in Germany were no longer alive and Germany became a more distant memory for him. In essence, he was the last man standing and there were very few things that linked him to Germany anymore. He leaned on my mom and I for help and in hindsight, it was the beginning of something that would later lead to our relationship thawing and becoming better. Unfortunately, more health issues were to come which would lead to mini strokes and onset of dementia. He entered a home with the help of my future father-in-law because his mom was there for a while. He knew people and he knew how to get them in. While there visiting him, we talked and through the bouts of clarity, the walls came down and I saw my dad in a new light. He told me stories of the war, Germany and growing up. One incident had me shocked. The incident happened during the war. He was told by his commander to fire into a crowd of civilians and he refused. It seems my dad had taken hold of a German grenade and was holding it in his hand prepared to use it against his commander. He knew an illegal order and refused to do it. I asked him if he pre was prepared to use it. He said yes. When I read this letter to his brother years later I realized where he was and I could only imagine the circumstances he was in. The war changed him for sure, and the sights that he had seen broke him. The death of his brother and his father eventually soured him on his country and the people responsible for dragging them into the war. In those years of decline, I realized who my dad was and why he was who he was. I began kissing and showing signs of affection to him. We never really did that before, but we did that now when me and mom would visit and we could say goodbye to him. I talked to him in German since it was easier for him to communicate that way. My father and I agreed on many things and he was still the love of my mom's life. Both had seen the horrors of the war and both had lost many dear friends and family. It was my dad and mom who rescued each other and built a life here in America for me and eventually my own family. Everything I have was built on my dad and mom's persistence and love for each other. I still hear my dad in, in my boys' tones and mannerisms. They, that grin that both my boys share, the way they carry themselves. My boys never met my dad, but I swear it's like the song In the Living Years by Mike and the Mechanics. It's about a man thinking about his father and how they never talked to each other. The lyric goes, I think I caught his spirit later that same year. I'm sure I heard his echo in my baby's newborn tears. It's pretty prophetic. My father and I finally reached an understanding and I felt like it was too late. You think you have all the time in the world, but you don't. My dad got to see my wife and I get married and he was there at the reception. I stayed close to him as he watched as he watched us dance together at our wedding. My dad never forgot our names and who we were. I just wish we could have had more quality time together. Through the dementia and the confusion, my father and I found an understanding. I saw a glimpse of his life and an unfiltered view of the good, the bad, and the ugly that was his life. There is not a day that goes by that I ache to hear that rough, heavy accented voice of his. So here's to you, Dad. I miss you, and thanks for making such an indelible mark on me. And thanks for trying to teach me about life. All I can say, Dad, is lesson learned. Lesson truly learned. A little later, maybe, but still learned. Thanks. Say hi to Mom for us, and give her a kiss from all of us.